Hey everyone, this is Charles Maitre from loungeboudoir.com and today I'm going to talk to you about three common mistakes a lot of beginning boudoir photographers make. So when starting out on any new venture, there are things you know, there are things you know you don't know, and there are things you don't know that you don't know. And this video is going to address that third category because things you don't know you don't know are going to rear their head during your practice session where you will arrive at a point where you're stuck because something unforeseen happened and you're not prepared for it. And so this video is going to address a few of those things you don't know you didn't know so that you will be better prepared when you do trade shoots and when you are starting to learn how to shoot boudoir. Common mistake number one is thinking that your model is going to know what to do when she steps in front of your camera. Okay, she's, she's not. She's not gonna know what to do. She's going to step out into whatever space you're shooting in, in her outfit, and she's gonna stand there waiting for you to tell her what to do next. Are you gonna shoot her against the wall? Are you gonna shoot her by the window, on the bed, on the floor, in a chair? You have to guide her every step of the way. Now, if she's an experienced model and sometimes a dancer, then they will go ahead and maybe start striking poses on their own. But you don't want that to happen for two reasons. Number one is most likely those poses won't be appropriate for boudoir. And second, it's gonna take away from you learning how to pose them. So don't get sidetracked with their agenda, um, with them sort of, you know, just striking poses if, if they do do that and you just taking pictures randomly. You want to stick to your agenda. You want to have the poses that you want to work on and that you want to practice um, be the main focus of the shoot. So in order to avoid mistake number one, you want to have some type of posing guide handy that you can refer to. Now this can be on your phone, it can be a Pinterest board, it can be images in a magazine that you've cut out or printed out or whatever. But have, a, have some images that you can, your cheat sheet that you can look at and even show your subject what you're going for. And don't be embarrassed about pulling out these, these images. I mean, I do it all the time. Um, even to this day, I always try and shoot a couple of new poses that I've never shot before and um, I take it out and I, I show my, my client and I say, hey, look, I want to try this. What do you think? You know, and it's a quick way to communicate what you're what you're going for. So don't be embarrassed about that at all, thinking that your subject or your model doesn't know what you're doing, because on, on a level, you really don't. So don't don't shy away from that. You know, embrace it. Common mistake number two is trying to shoot too many poses during your practice session. Um, this is a case where less is more. And I'm saying like three or four poses. Just practice three or four poses during your practice session. Now, you're gonna be doing a lot of shooting with those three or four poses, and you're gonna get a lot of variety from those, from those few poses. And I'm gonna tell you how to do that. So I always think it's better to focus and concentrate on a few poses very intimately, then shoot a couple of poses um, with like a dozen, a dozen different poses. Doing it the second method, you know, trying to shoot a long laundry list of poses and only getting a few shots because you have to, you know, you have to keep it moving, you have to keep it moving, you have this time pressure. You may not be getting the best angle or distance with that pose because you've only shot a, a few of them and you've, you've moved on. When you shoot fewer poses and you shoot them at the four different angles and the four different distances I'm gonna talk about, you have this whole sort of 360 view almost of that pose and you're able to pick out the best angle and the best distances from all the shots that you've done. And you have that forever. You know, you can write down the ones that work and just forget about the ones that don't. Let's say, you're gonna practice three different poses uh, on a bed. So you take the first pose and you instruct your model how to situate herself. And you shoot from the left, usually at 45 degrees, 
center and from the right at 45 degrees. And if feasible, a bird's eye view. With bed shots and floor shots, um, it's more appropriate to have a bird's eye view than some other poses. So those are, those are your four angles, three or four if you include the bird's eye. And then your four different distances are going to, are going to be a wide shot, medium shot, close up, and then extreme close up. The extreme close up is kind of a, an option, but you want the wide, medium, and close up. And you do that for each of the four angles. Now it's gonna be harder to do the distances with the bird's eye unless you have a zoom. So if you have a prime, you're probably only gonna get one shot. But the point is you're gonna get about 12 to 16 variations of that one pose at four different angles, ideally, and four different distances, which gives you four times four is 16. And then when you get home, like I said before, and you look at them all on your computer, the ones that work, the ones that look good are gonna just pop out at you. And you can write those down and save those angles and distances of how, how you shot them in a notebook or something. So that when you have paying clients, your shoot is gonna be very efficient and you're not gonna be wasting the model's time trying poses that you think might work, but that actually don't because you've already gone through that whole cycle. So that's how you avoid common mistake number two. Now, if you have time at the end of your, your practice session, at the end of your three or four shots, you can add another shot or you can add another setting. And you can keep adding additional setups depending on how much time you have you know, with your model. Common mistake number three is not understanding the kind of light you're shooting in. Okay, this is important. Boudoir photography is not just shooting women in intimate apparel. It's shooting women in intimate apparel in a certain kind of light. And I'm assuming most of you are gonna be using natural light from a window or possibly an open door. And you have to know what type of light you're gonna use with that window that will flatter the type of client that you have the most. So for example, if you have, let's say an older client that has a lot of wrinkles or a young client that has a lot of acne or acne scars, you have to know which type of light and where to position you and your model to that window so that it's going to flatter them the most. Basically, there are five different setups. There's front light, back light, side light, and then broad light and short light. Let's say you have someone that wants to appear thinner in her images. Well, if you use a certain kind of light, you can do that. Now, I wrote a, a guide called How to Shoot Boudoir with Natural Light. It's only $7, five setups you need to know. Um, I'll put a description or a link in the description below and you can check it out if you're interested. But knowing how, knowing the type of client that you're gonna be shooting, it's important to know, to use the, the right kind of light so they, so they like their images. You know, if you use the wrong kind of light, you can make women look older than they are. That's not good. They're not gonna like that at all. Trust me, I know I've been there and I've done that. Um, more with my portrait photography back in the day than with boudoir photography. But that's an important lesson, lesson you need to know. So uh, check out my guide if you're interested. And um, I hope this video has given you some insight and has prepared you for a couple of things you may not have known. How do I say that? For things you, may, you don't know you don't know. Anyway, I appreciate your time. I enjoy making these videos and sharing what I've learned about boudoir photography with all of you. And I will see you at a future point in the YouTube universe. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like these videos.